Good evening everybody. 2010 doesn't seem like that long ago. It is however quite a long time ago. 2006 of course is even further away and that was when the United States Navy retired the mighty Tomcat. Now in my what if universe the Malagasy fleet air arm kept the Tomcat flying until the Rafale replaced it in 2015. So uh, I hope that's the right pronunciation to uh, my friend from overseas. But here we go, here we have a duo of Tomcats. So these are the D model, this is the Hobby Boss D model kit. Now I build what if non-fictional. So the first one that I've built is in a combat configuration, giving a long range escort to the two Malagasy what if carriers. Uh, so this is well equipped to four Phoenix, two drop tanks, two sparrows, two sidewinders. Of course, it's a D model, so it has the chin mounted infrared search and track, which is a very good piece of kit. And like I said, Hobby Boss 1 in 70 second F14D. Kits that I actually really like and really enjoy building. The wings do sweep backwards and forwards. It doesn't have the wing glove extension because it's a D model. And that one is air combat fit. And this one is a bomb cat. So uh, the Tomcat throughout quite a lot of its service actually was able to carry bombs. It was always envisioned um, to do some kind of secondary bombing role. And uh, they tried it out uh, quite a few times with the A model and then with the Bs. Uh, the Ds, of course, really took on the role and were used extensively um, in ensuring the no-fly zone. And then uh, the actions in 1998 in Iraq and then uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom, as it was called, um, in 2003. So by that time, the Tomcat had really taken on much more of a strike and reconnaissance role, and it could do um, it all very well. From listening to the Tomcat podcast, you get a real sense of what the D was capable of, um, and the D really stood out um, as a great aircraft. Um, a lot of the pilots, and you can watch the, the Tomcast, it's called the podcast on YouTube, uh, they said that this was faster than the Hornet, um, more of an air superiority fighter. They regard the F-A-18, even the E&F, as more of a close support aircraft. And if they were going to do strikes, and some of them flew Hornets and Tomcats, uh, being quite hope the chain of command on the carrier, they would actually prefer to do the strikes in the D model, uh, which is interesting. So in my service, this uh, Bombcat has taken on the role from the Buccaneer. By um, the... Mid 90s, the Buccaneers were getting uh, long in the tooth, especially those on the carriers subjected to all those pounding landings each time and the catapult shots. So, uh, with an abundance of D models uh, in service and only two carriers uh, for the Malagasy fleet air arm, they went down the Bombcat route. So, here we have the Bombcat. Now, the Bombcat uh, is perfectly able to escort itself, which is not something the Buccaneer could do. So in terms of self-escort, apologies, I've got another cold. Welcome to Britain. We've got a Phoenix here, a long-range BVR missile. We've got the uh, heater, as they call them, the Sidewinders, AIM-9Ms, one there and one there. And then we've got the Sparrow tucked away, the uh, M model, the AIM-7M. So the, the Tomcat can really escort itself on a strike and back from a strike, no issues. Um, it's something the Buccaneer, of course, can't do. Spotted a bit of weathering I've missed there. Um, and then for the actual strike, this has got two £2,000 JDAM bombs, uh, which are going to go downrange and do some damage. So the uh, Bombcat, as it was called, uh, you could use the GBU-24, which was a larger uh, laser-guided weapon, or these JDAMs. I've gone for the JDAMs. I quite like JDAMs. Um, and yeah, I mean, the, the, the Bombcat, the Tomcat, but, but very much... Um, capable of self-escorting, doing their own strikes, still with a good range. Once you've dropped your bombs, you can resume the air superiority role. If anyone's going to mess with you, you can shoot them BVR using the AN-2 
APG 71 and the infrared search and track. So a, a, a good amount of capability. The drop tanks, of course, added a lot of drag. And you'll find out if you listen to the Tomcast that the pilots don't necessarily think that these were such a good idea because the drag that you add um, and the way it affected the handling, it's kind of every pound of fuel you carry, uh, how many pounds of fuel do you burn? But they, they're pretty much late in the service, tended to fly with those. Of course, you can ripple them off if you need to. Um, so there we go. That is the Bombcat. Um, I absolutely love these uh, Hobby Boss kits. I think they're excellent. And someone gave me a really good idea of stopping the wings slopping around. One of the problems with the Hobby Boss wings is they slop around quite a lot. So adding a piece of card, a plastic card, just above the uh, join inside there means it's much more stable. It stays in track and it, it goes together. So yeah, I, I really, really rate these kits. Um, you can get these kits for fourteen ninety nine on eBay, and I, I think for the money, well, uh, personally, I'm not into etched. I'm not into um, uh, spending hours and years on a build. Uh, I, I really like these, and I've got a few more plans for the Tomcats. So let me know what you think. And again, look at that. Bombs and Phoenix on one aircraft. The mighty Tomcat.